Trudeau knows the world is changing, turning against him and his globalist socialist buddies, and he's terrified. Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. At a press conference in Quebec City two days ago, Trudeau let slip his fear of Canadians and how they are turning more conservative. He doesn't realize that it's his far left Liberal Party of Canada that's causing that shift. And in fact, that shift is happening all over the world. And that just scares him to death. Let's take a look at what he had to say during that press conference. We have seen uh, around the world a rise of uh, uh, populist uh, right-wing forces in just about every democracy uh, that we've seen. And um, it is of concern to see uh, political parties choosing to instrumentalize anger, fear, division, anxiety. Um, my approach has always been um, to respond to it, to understand it and to look to solve it, to roll up our sleeves, work hard and with ambition for this country and for our future. And I continue to be um, convinced the Canadians are thoughtful about the challenges we're facing and uh, ready to see them solved rather than just allow themselves to be, uh, have their anger uh, amplified uh, without any solutions offered. My take on this is that he blames what he calls the right, but what we all know is a centralist majority for a populist movement that's spreading around the globe, especially in Europe and now throughout the United States and eventually in Canada. And he fears this. He says he's going to roll up his sleeves and get to work, as if he's ever done an honest day's work in his life. Why, I wonder, is the world turning against socialism? Could it be that nothing good has ever come from socialism? Could it be that the influx of immigrants into Canada and other countries around the world has led to chaos and record inflation? Because our infrastructure just can't handle the influx of people, and the printing of money and the spending of money that goes along with it has just sent us into uncontrollable debt? In Parliament, specifically question period, all he ever seems to want to talk about is spending, spending, spending. How much he's spent on this and how much he's going to spend on that. And how much the Conservatives are going to cut when they get into power. He never seems to want to talk about anything else. But when he does, he shows just how clueless he is when he brags about wanting to infringe more upon your human right of freedom of speech. Take a look at what he said in the House yesterday. The Honourable Member for belle chambly Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister doesn't have the habit of listening or reading to what the RCMP suggests, but the RCMP is, sa is saying it doesn't have the tools to counter a threat to security, to social peace, the threat of hate speech. It doesn't have the tools to do its work. Obviously, the religious defense in the criminal code that allows people to say and incite violence is a precious tool for those who want to sow violence. Does the Prime Minister agree to repeal the religious exemption from the Criminal Code? The Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, hate speech and anti-Semitism have no place in Canada. Our government fights racism and hatred like no government has done in the past, introducing an act on online harms, funding increased protection for mosques, synagogues, and places of worship, and our plan to criminalize the Holocaust denial. We recognize there is more to do. We will continue to work with our police services with the necessary laws to strengthen protection for all in this country. Notice how he didn't answer the question. He just deflected. And then he bragged about how he planned on criminalizing more free speech. Now, don't get me wrong. I support Israel and I support their right to exist and to defend themselves. And I would never deny any of the horrific events that happened in World War II. And I would say the majority of people feel the same. In my opinion, Holocaust deniers are delusional and bigots who hate the Jews. But does that mean we should criminalize their speech? I don't consider calling for violence towards a person or a group of people freedom of speech. And we have laws against that. But as we have seen with this Prime Minister, he won't just stop. Ask yourself, what will he ban next? Will he say that people who question the efficacy of the vaccine are spreading hate speech and they should be charged? I think he wants to. The problem with banning nonviolent speech, no matter how abhorrent or stupid it is, is that if the government gets away with it, the next time they will go further. The free marketplace of ideas should be trusted to shut down stupidity 
and bigotry. Insulting and offensive speech will be controlled by people's intolerance to it, as it should, not by the government regulating against it. Every time we allow the government to control what we do or we say or what we can listen to or the information that we can take in and evaluate for ourselves, we give up a little piece of our sovereignty and our freedom. If there's one thing I know for sure, the governments are constantly growing. They will take, take, take until there's nothing left. But that's just my opinion. I'd love to know what you think down in the comments below. And while you're down there, please hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And share this video with your friends and on social media. And I'll see you in the next video.